Holy, holy, holy. Everything I need, you are so beautiful to me. So raya re te re de beson di aranda da bakai. Father, we glorify your name this morning. Ooh, sat te re de beki. Holy, 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 holy. You are so beautiful to me. Wow. You see, when you begin to realize, you know how you like people to make over you? I know we, a lot of us say, oh, we don't. Let me, all, all of us do. In, in one level or another, we like to be made over. I've been married for 32 years. I know what my wife likes to hear. I know the things I'm supposed to say and love to say them. I know the look she's looking for. I know those things. We've been together long enough that I know those things. I know the minute I mess up by the atmosphere shift. I know that, all right? But in the midst of God, let me ask you something. The more you know God, shouldn't it be that same way that because of our relationship with God the Father when we begin to romance God oh now see we don't talk about that too much we don't romance God much you see we, we don't use terms like that in the church bless God he's holy and sanctified ha, and he's full of power ha, and I, you know I mean depending on where you was raised that made sense alright Preacher all red in the face, and I get red in the face sometimes, I know that. But what about the romance? Telling God, you are my everything. You see, we, we kind of get this attitude that, well, well, God knows. God knows. He knows how I feel. He looks into my... Let me tell you something. Everybody, even God, likes to be romanced. Or why else would He tell us in His Word to enter His courts with thanksgiving and praise and worship? Why is worship so important if it was not to romance God? I know that's stretching some of you, but hang on, I'm not done yet, alright? So we're going to release the kids at this time. Man, you come to this church, you never know what the preacher's going to say. You get in the crowd, aren't you? <laughs> All right, point your hands this way. Heavenly Father, we ask you to move in their life in a mighty way, Lord, that you will anoint them, that you will change their lives with a relationship with you. Father, speak to them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Wow. I, I You know, have y'all noticed that I, it, maybe it's just me? But man, there is a shift in this house the last few weeks. There is a there is a change. There is, I mean, you know, for us preachers, that's a little unnerving because, you know, we like to have a plan. Now, I like God to move, but I'd like Him to tell me first what He was going to do, you know, so I'd have some idea of where we're going. But, you know, here lately, mm, not a whole lot of planning going on. I mean, I have nice sermons, but, boy, mm, the presence of God is so real. So today... We're going to begin in Acts, the second chapter. I'm going to get a, begin a new sermon, a uh, new series. When we ended our fast, God spoke to me three things, three definite things that um, that I was going to need to deal with. I was going to need to maybe explain. I, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to say this morning. Now I know that's a little unusual. I got scriptures. Okay? I do. But you know, I normally have scriptures and thoughts and all of this stuff all laid out. My God didn't do that to me this time. He only gave me the scripture verses. So where we're going with this, I'm not sure. 
So, <laughs> we, uh, we all going to be surprised this morning, all right? You know, you heard that joke about the preacher, and he always, he always put his sermon right under his pulpit, you know, every Sunday. And so, this one Sunday came along, and uh, he got ready to preach. He reached down under, sermon, under his pulpit and says, hmm, no sermon. He looked up at the congregation and said, you know, most of the time, me and God know what we're going to say. Now it's just God, because <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> God spoke to me when we ended the fast about the word kairos. Kairos is a Greek term. It's an ancient Greek word meaning the right or opportune moment, the supreme moment. As believers, we must begin to understand the times of God. Not the end times, but the time of opportunity where the decision we have to make the decision we have to make changes everything. God uses the Kairos time, the set time appointed by God for decision. The Kairos place, God's set place of specific events and anointings, and the Kairos people, the set people God uses to accomplish a certain thing. We must understand what time it is, where we are at, most importantly, who we are. That sounds good. That, you know, it, it does. I, I worked hard on that. <laughs> but you know what? God spoke to me when we finished the fast. On that Sunday, God began to deal with me. Actually, began to deal with me the Wednesday night beforehand because we finished, was finishing the fast there in Bernie, the church I have there. God began to deal with me that He is raising up in this time, in this place, that Covenant Life Fellowship... It's going to be a Kairos time for us, a Kairos season. A most opportune time to accomplish His will. A time set by God, a time that is specific, a time that we are to step into because when the moment is here, we step into it or we don't step into it, it's our choice. Kairos moment, Kairos time. God dealt with me and he spoke three things to me. He said, Covenant Life Fellowship is a Cairo, there is a Kairos time which is now for the Covenant Life Fellowship. Two, it's a Kairos place. And three, a Kairos people. A set people, set place, set time. When we're dealing with time and we're dealing with those issues, we find all out through the Word of God that there are set times that God has moved over and over and over. And it's very specific. It's very uh, 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 set apart times that God says, I'm going to do this in this area or in this place or in this time or with this person. It is a set place it is a, or a set time. It is a time where God has said, in this life I'm going to move specifically. Now, God is always moving. I understand that. There's always a move of God. There's a flow of God. I've taught on that. I've taught that we are to be rivers, not wells. We're supposed to be flowing in the move of God. Whether, and God is always flowing. It's whether we get into the flow or not. But there are times... That there's specific choices we have to make. Covenant Life Fellowship is coming to that time now. So it's burning. There are definite decisions that we're going to have to make. Because for those, of the, for those of us that choose to step into that time, then God does specific things. Now, uh, at first set of verses, Acts. You'll find this in the New Testament. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, that term there, fully come, is kairos. That is the Greek for it. It is kairos. It is a set time. It was when it came to full fruition. When it was the timing of God. When the day of Pentecost was fully come. And they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. You know it was awesome in here last Sunday. Got several calls of people that got filled with the Holy Spirit. Some got some fresh stuff. Hadn't spoken tongues in a while, and all of a sudden they were standing up here. Uh, James, James told me, he said, you know, I wasn't planning on coming. I wasn't going to come up front. I was having a good time right back where I was at. You know? And he said, all of a sudden I was up front. He said, I don't know how I got there. I was just up there, and you were praying for me. Just God. 
You see, sometime in our life, the reason we, we, if we don't understand the timings of God and we don't understand that there are specific times, can I tell you that there are people that you're supposed to be ministering to right now? There's people that you're supposed to be impacting right now. Your day of Pentecost has fully come. You see, there's no excuse. There's no waiting for a little longer, God. There's no, I, I, I need to do a little bit more study. I need to be, no, sir. The time is now. It has fully come now for your life. And it's whether you choose to step into that or not. It's whether you choose to say, you know what? This is the timing of God. And I choose at this point in my life to sacrifice all. And whatever God wants for my life is what I want. Kairos time. A set time. Let me tell you something about the set timings of God. First, they always impact everybody around them. Think about the upper room. Change the city. And from there was birthed the early church. Brought change to the world. That Kairos moment. Think about Moses. When God showed up to Moses... You see, it wasn't Moses' Kairos moment in the basket. Ah, it was great. His Kairos moment is when he had to face God. When he had to face the burning bush and he said, Wow, that's different. I think I'll go look. You see, some of y'all are here for that very reason. You go, hmm, that's different. Maybe I need to go check that out. Careful. That's all I got to say. Because let me tell you something about God. He'll get all over you. So there was Moses looking at the burning bush. So he comes up. God says, well, hang on. You got to change the way you walk. Because this is different. This is different. Let me tell you something about a Kairos time. It demands change in your life. Whatever change that is, I'm not setting the change. I'm not going to stand up here and say, thus saith the Lord, you've got to do this and this and this. No! What I'm saying is when you see God, when that happens in your life, there's going to have to be some change. Because where you're fixing to walk is different than where you've been walking. And when you realize it's different. You know what? Moses did not have a problem taking those shoes off. Not one time does Moses go, Oh, I don't know, you know the sand's hot. You know the rocks are rough. This is a desert, God. No, because something different was here. You see, what we've done is we've preached, hey, you've got to take off your shoes, but we've never offered a holy ground to walk on. We've told the world, you've got to change, but we've never given them anything different to step out on. We've never said there's more. We've never said there's something different. What we've done is we've said, you've got to change. But we never offered them anything that would give them the desire to take those shoes off. You see, when we come to the point when we begin to offer God, you'll find that the world won't have a problem changing. And you know what? Neither will you. What we've done is we've looked at our life and we've said, you know what? I don't live holy enough or righteous enough or all of, these, all of this stuff. When you realize that this is different, this holy ground. This place is different. This area in your life that God is beginning to raise up, beginning to reveal to you something different. When that dawns on you, because let me tell you something, until he got close, all it was was a burning bush. And if you study a little history, you find out that's not that unusual in that area. The difference was it didn't burn up. You see... It wasn't that it was on fire that caught Moses' attention. What caught Moses' attention is that the fire wasn't going out. There are people in watching you right now, and you know what? You may be on fire, but they're not too concerned with that because they've seen people on fire before. But let me tell you something. When they begin to watch your life and you're not going out, then they go, hey, this is something different. Yeah, right. yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. Something different about this one. Something different about this. Let's go check things out. 
You see, somewhere in our life we must come to a point where we realize that what God is offering is more than we've had in the past. Your Kairos time. Whether you realize it or not, you're there. Why? Because you're here. You didn't come by accident. You didn't come because you was invited. God looked down through the pages of time and said, I need them right here, right now. And you know what? He did everything in his power to work it out so that you said yes to whoever invited you. You're not here by accident. Because God's offering something different. See, he told Moses, he said, Moses, wait a minute. This is holy. What did Joshua tell the children of Israel when their Kairos moment came and they were ready to cross into the promised land? He said, you see that ark? Now to them, that ark represented God. For, for 40 years, what they had seen was a cloud by day and a fire by night. That Ark of the Covenant represented God to them. And you know what Joshua did? Walked through the congregation going, when we go tomorrow, watch the Ark. Because we've not been this way before. What's that mean? It means everything that we've experienced in God in the past is not where we're going. We've not been this way before. That's unsettling. I understand that. I've been in this thing forever. I know. I've seen a lot of stuff. I've seen the good and the bad. I have seen God move. I've seen God heal. I've seen God save. I've seen revivals take place. I've seen all of it. But what we're ex fixing to experience, I've not seen before. When God spoke to me, Mm. On that Sunday when we broke our fast and we were worshiping, God told me we've come to our set time. And that from here on out it was going to be different. I don't know what that means. I don't know. But I know God said it was going to be different. Because you know what? He's offering us something different than we've had before. I don't know what you've had before. I don't know what your experience in God is before. Some of you are wearing scars and, 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 and hurt and wounded. I understand that. Some of you are still trying to find your place. You don't know where you fit. And so basically what you're doing is you're standing on the sideline. There's people in town that are watching to see if we make it. Let them watch. I don't care. You know why? Because we've come to our set time. Next verse of Scripture, Shane. Romans 13, 9. For this, thou shalt not... Now, here's a whole list of thou shalt not. All right? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely. All right. All of that brought into one thing. Do you see that? That right there, right there at the end. It is briefly comprehended. In other words, it is brought into... This saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Next verse. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is, is the fulfilling of the law. Now, we could get into all kinds of technical stuff and all of the doctrines and the different stuff, but let me tell you something. That's pretty plain right there. You got to love. Next verse. And that knowing the time, the time. That is Kairos right there. Knowing the Kairos that now it is high time to awake out of your sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than we believe. Let me ask you something. Who was he talking to? He was talking to the church. He wasn't talking to the world. Yes, it was written to Romans. You know who Romans was? Romans was the church at Rome. The Romans. It's that simple. We make it complicated. It's not too complicated. What's he saying? Our salvation, our deliverance, our freedom is nearer than we think. Next verse. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Next verse. 
Let us walk honestly in the day, not in rioting and in drunkenness, not in chambering, not in wantonness, uh, not in strife and envy. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Our set time. Maybe you're sleeping. I don't know. I try to be entertaining so you don't go to sleep. But I mean, you know. But see, there comes a time in the things of God that we go, this time is different. Your Kairos time. Now think about this. If this is your set time, if God has ordained through the countless centuries to make this happen for you, what's He going to do in your life? You know why we pick songs like we ended with tonight? Because sometime we have to change the way we think. It's not a vengeful God we serve. It's not a God that doesn't care. It's a God that is everything we can hope for. You know why the world struggles? No hope. It's that simple. You know why drugs are on the rise or are, are as prevalent as they are? Because the world is looking for something that's going to bring some satisfaction in their life. Some of you are looking for the same thing. You just want for once in your life to be satisfied. Only God. Only God. You see, when God began to deal with me about this being a Kairos time, I began to understand that we must know the times we're in because that is where the opportunities are. When you look at Kairos moments in the Word of God or you study church history and you find those events, those events that change lives, those events that... I'm, I, listen, salvation is important and yes, for that individual it is a Kairos moment. But can I tell you as far as the church is concerned, when a Kairos moment comes, it doesn't just change individuals, it changes churches, it changes cities, it changes towns, it changes communities, it changes everything. Everything. You know why? Because it's our time. It's really that simple. You see, I've been learning for 22 years for this time. I've been a pastor a long time. But I was being poured into for this time. What are we going to see? Things we haven't seen before. You see, when your Kairos moment comes, when your set time comes, then you enter into places you've not been before. Look at Moses. When he stood before the burning bush, God said, wait, take your shoes off. Look at the children of Israel. When they entered into the promised land, it was a new thing. It was a new place that they had not been before. I can take you over and over and over through the Word of God. When Kairos moments came, it changed. It changed everything. Now, whether you believe it or not is your choice, but we are at our Kairos time. Now, to be honest, we're a Kairos people. What does that mean? We're set people. I know I'm getting ahead of myself. I was going to break this into three sermons. We'll see how that goes. You know why it's important that we understand the times? So that we don't miss our opportunity. So that we don't miss. You see, what we do is, if, if we get distracted with life, and we just struggle through, and we're just barely surviving, and we're just barely holding our marriage together, and we're just barely holding our finances together, and we're just barely making it every day, just surviving, just surviving, just surviving. What we, under, what we figure out is, when we see the burning bush, we go, oh, the bush is burning. But I'm too busy right now with all the stuff going on in my life to go check it out. And so we pass right by that burning bush. Can I tell you, Moses was not the only shepherd in that area where that bush was burning. Think about that for just a minute. He wasn't the only one there. 
But he is the one that went, check it out. Mary wasn't the only virgin. But Mary said yes. You see, when your Kairos time comes, there are choices to make. I believe in choices. If my kids give me a hard time because everything I preach is a choice. Just is. It's always going to come down to that. They give me a hard time about it always being a choice. But I can't find in the Word of God where it's not. What about your burning bush? Are you letting your life so distract you that you're missing your burning bush? Give me the last verse of Scripture, Shay. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season, that is kairos, right there, due season. The issue is, do you understand what season you're in? You see, a lot of preachers would stand up and they'd say, you've got to do this and this and this. Huh? I'm not one of those. I'm just asking, are you sure you're not missing your season? You see, I'm, I'm getting testimonies about how God's, ooh, I'm feeling stuff I've never felt before. I get filled, got filled with the Holy Spirit. I, you know, the, the, it's happening. It really is. And if it's not happened to you yet, hang on. If you want it, it's available. Everything in God is available to you if you want it. Even Paul said, seek for the good gifts. What is it that you can do in your set time? When Moses said yes, at that point he delivered Israel. Do you realize that? At the burning bush, when he said yes to God, children of Israel were delivered. Now it took a little while to manifest. What about you? What can you accomplish? Moses was a shepherd on the backside of a desert somewhere. But when his set time came, he became a deliverer. He also became the, uh, the person that it says in the scripture, he talked to God face to face. Now that is something else. He became the man that was so much in the presence of God that his very countenance shone just because he said yes to his Kairos moment. What can you do? What can you do? See, I can take you to Paul when he got knocked off the donkey. That was his Kairos moment. When Jesus went walking by and said, follow me, that was the Kairos moment. It changed everything in their life. What about you? You see, what we do is, is we go, I won't change. And God hears how I want it to change. And we got us a list. We want this to happen and this to happen and this to happen and this to happen and this to happen. And, to happen. and we'd really like to have it in that order, God. I don't think that worked that way for Paul. As he was laying there on the ground. You know when God showed up, when God spoke to the uh, person that was going to go pray for him. The person, yeah, the person said, mm, You know, he's been pretty rough on the church. You sure we're talking about the same person? God said, Yep, he's over on this straight street called Straight, I believe is what it was. Said he's there, and I've showed him all the things he's going to have to suffer. 
for the gospel. You see, we look at Paul and we go, wow, what a man of God. Look at all the things he did. Look at all the things he changed. Yeah. He also was beat on a regular basis. You know, do we, we want that kind of move of God in our life? Well, no, we really don't want that kind of move. June of last year, God spoke to me about coming to Texas. I packed up everything I had, and I came to Texas. Now, it's been great. I'm, I'll be honest with you, it's been awesome. I mean... You know, I couldn't have asked for anything better. Do you realize we're less than, than, what, eight months old is all we are? We're already having to look for other places to go because we're getting full. We had to buy a building for the youth. You sell it's all, the, all the kids. And there's some missing. It's been great. But I never hesitated. You know why? Because I know the voice of God. That was my Kairos moment. Mine. What's yours? You see, we're at that point again. That was me individually. This is me corporately now. We're here. What are we going to do? Are we going to watch the burning bush? Go, wow, that's pretty cool. But you know, I really don't want to change anything in my life right now. I want it to get better. But you know what? I'm pretty satisfied. Got a decent job. Marriage is okay. Kids are not running too wild. I'm good. Or do we go, you know what? That is different. And I do believe I'm going to check that out. Because you see, when you really trust God, you understand that He has your best in mind. A Kairos time. What are you going to do with it? It's your choice. But as a church, we're there. The bush is burning bright. I do believe some of us are going to go check it out. You're welcome to come. But what God is offering is different than what we've had before. It's different than the way we walked before. It's different than what we've heard before. What God is offering now It's going to be different. 